In this After Effects tutorial, we'll explore three powerful features of the markers to enhance your animation workflow. First, we'll cover responsive design time, which lets you easily adjust animation durations without manually moving keyframes. Then we'll look at the marker base animation trigger, a method for triggering animations with markers, saving you time and effort. Finally, we'll dive into time-controlled animations, where you'll learn to control animation timing using time remapping and markers. These features will help you work smarter and streamline your animation process. Let's get started. All right, the first smart feature of the marker is its responsive design time. Let's start with a common issue you might face in After Effects. Suppose you have a simple text animation with some bounce and scale keyframes. The duration of this text animation composition is set to three seconds. Now, if you want to make this animation longer, you might think you can simply drag it to extend the duration, but that doesn't work. While you can make it shorter, extending it requires additional steps. Traditionally, if you wanted to increase the length, you would need to open the pre-comp. Then go to the composition settings and increase its duration. Let's say from three seconds to 15 seconds. After that, you'd manually move all the keyframes within the new time frame. If you have multiple keyframes, this process can become tedious. Once done, you'd return to the main composition and drag the pre-comp to align with the new duration. While this method works, it can be time-consuming and frustrating, especially for longer animations. This is where the marker tool comes in to save time and effort. Let's look at how it simplifies the process. First, undo any manual adjustments you've made. Go back to the main composition, select your text animation pre-comp, and open it. You'll notice the keyframes on the text layers. To use the marker tool, make sure no layers are selected, then click to add a marker. Alternatively, you can press the star key on your keyboard to add a marker. Once the marker appears, double-click it to open its settings. Change the marker's comment to start, and set its duration to around 90 frames, roughly 1.5 seconds. You can also change the marker's label color for better visibility. Let's use yellow. Next, enable the protected region option. This feature is what makes the animation responsive. Click OK to save your settings. Now position this marker carefully to cover the entire duration of the animation within your timeline. Double check the keyframe timings to ensure the marker encompasses the complete animation Next, add another marker for the end of the animation. Again, double-click the marker, name it End. Enable the Protected Region option for this marker as well, and set its duration to around 60 frames, one second. Adjust its position to cover the last set of keyframes in the animation. Once you've done this, return to the main composition. At this stage, you might not see any immediate changes in your timeline. To update the composition, right-click on the pre-comp, Go to Markers and select Update Markers from Source. After doing this, you'll see the start and end markers appear on your composition timeline. Now the real magic happens. You can shorten or lengthen the duration of the pre-comp directly in the main timeline by simply dragging its edges. If you make it shorter, the animation remains intact and works seamlessly. If you extend the duration by dragging it to the right, the animation automatically adjusts without requiring any manual keyframe repositioning. This saves a significant amount of time and ensures smooth workflow adjustments. And there you have it. Using the Marker Tool's responsive design time feature, you can easily control the length of your animations without diving into complicated adjustments. This is just one of the many ways to speed up your workflow and make After Effects even more powerful. Now that we've covered this feature, let's move on to the next one. The next feature is the Marker-Based Animation Trigger. Let's say I have a bee with a simple jump animation. In my platform composition, I've randomly placed some platforms and added position keyframes. Now, I want the bee to jump whenever it reaches a platform. One way to do this is by copying the keyframes and pasting them at the desired locations. However, this can be time-consuming and tedious. Instead, we can use an expression to automate this process. You can download this expression from the link in the description. After downloading the expression, simply open the expression, select all, and copy it. To apply it, select the B's position property, hold down the Alt or Option key, and click the stopwatch. Then, paste the expression into the box. 
At first, nothing happens because the expression requires markers to work. Here's how the expression functions. It offsets the position keyframes whenever a marker is placed. This means you don't have to copy and paste the same keyframes repeatedly. To trigger the jump animation, make sure no layer is selected, go to the desired location on the timeline, and add a marker by clicking or pressing the star key. Once you add a marker, the bee will jump. You can add more markers wherever you want the animation to trigger, adjust their positions if needed. As you can see, the bee now jumps at all the marked locations without manually duplicating keyframes. This method is quick, efficient, and perfect for triggering animations using markers. It's a fantastic way to streamline your workflow, especially for repetitive tasks. Let's take a look at time-controlled animations using markers. This method is similar to the marker-based animation trigger, but allows for an extra layer of control. You can manipulate the timing of your animation using markers. In this example, we'll create a simple mouse clicking animation and learn how to time it efficiently using markers. Let's begin by opening the mouse cursor composition, which includes two layers, the cursor and a ring. Together, these layers create the effect of a mouse click. This is a common animation, but when dealing with multiple layers or pre-composed layers, Manually repeating animations can be tedious. Markers make this process much simpler. First, right-click on the composition, go to Time, and select Enable Time Remapping. This action adds two keyframes, one at the start of the composition and the other at the end. These keyframes are important because they encapsulate the entire animation. Now we need to identify where the animation ends, in this case, at the last keyframe of the cursor click effect. Move to this position and add a keyframe there. Now let's create a setup for repeating the animation. Drag the composition layer to the left so the clicking animation doesn't play at the beginning. This step ensures a clean slate for the rest of the animation. The expression is available via the link in the description. To apply the expression, copy it and navigate to the time remap property. Hold down the Alt or Option key, click the stopwatch icon, and paste the expression into the editor. At this stage, the animation won't trigger just yet because it requires markers to work. Before adding markers, let's create some basic position animation for the cursor. Open the position property, add keyframes, and animate the cursor to move to a specific point. For example, it can move to one location, stay there for a second, and then move to another location. This creates a natural flow for the cursor's movement. Once the animation is in place, it's time to add markers to trigger the click effect. To add a marker, go to the desired position in the timeline, make sure no layers are selected, and click to place the marker. You'll notice the click animation plays exactly at the marker's position. Repeat this step for every point where you want the animation to occur. If necessary, adjust the marker positions to refine the timing. Once all the markers are added, play the animation to see how it looks. Notice how the click animation repeats at each marker. This approach eliminates the need to manually duplicate keyframes, saving both time and effort. Now let's take a closer look at the expression driving this setup. Press EE on the keyboard to open the expression editor. The expression repeats the animation between the first and second keyframes triggered by the markers. It essentially cycles through the animation without requiring additional keyframes. If your animation includes more than two keyframes, if you want to repeat the animation between the second and third keyframes, you can make changes here in the expression. This setup lets you repeat animations between any combination of keyframes, offering greater flexibility for complex animations. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, good luck with your projects and peace.